Welcome back to Oh Man Gaming, everyone. Sorry for the long hiatus. I was going to do more Bannerlord videos a while back, but the game was still heavy in development, and still is, but it was moving along a lot faster back then. So I, I had filmed a review video back in May, but again, updates, so I just didn't publish it, and I just let it slide and played other stuff without recording and let the game slow down a bit. Oh, earlier today, this is Tuesday, um, December, not December, Tuesday, January 12th, 2021. Earlier today, I installed or updated to the latest beta. So I was going to do a short uh, review video, but I'm big on show rather than tell. Plus, who knows what the next updates are going to bring, or when they're going to come out. I was surprised that they came out with one today. So, instead of doing just a short review video, I'm going to give you a very short description of the game, talk about a little bit of the issues, and then why don't we just play the current beta? Because I spent like six hours downloading it today. Just finished a little while ago. So, if you remember Warband, if you won, if you played that, this is a lot of it's more of the same, but it's kind of take modded Warband and all the great stuff that modders added to that game, put it in your base game, and then extrapolate more, like expand on those features, and you got Bannerlord. It took eight years to develop this. If you think that's a little underwhelming for eight years of work, um, I don't blame you if it upsets you. Uh, this is still early access. There's still updates. My big rule on early access is go in knowing that there's risks. Um, play it or buy it primarily for what it is now. Keep track of your version numbers. Even maybe write yourself a short description of what you like about each version as they come out. That way when you run into a version you don't like, which you should record your reasons why then too, you can just roll back and play old versions until it catches up to your tastes again. Um, I don't do it that way. I know the history of this company. I, I figure that you know it's always a risk. The first Mountain Blade they had a lot of features in mind, and people bought the game based on those features they were talking about. And then they got upset because a lot of them didn't make it into the final version of Mountain Blade, and wound up on the standalone expansion Mountain Blade Warband, which I've already shown a little bit of on this channel back in 2017, 2018. Yes. So, people were upset. And that is a history. There's a few features they've talked about in devlogs and old dev journals for this game. For Bannerlord. That I was hyped about. I don't see them in there yet. It's still early access. I'm not going to complain. Even if it doesn't come. I've put... I'm rounding out to 400 hours. I've got like 393 hours into this game already. I only spent maybe $45 on it, so I think I got my money's worth. Even if the features I'm looking for don't make it in, I'm still okay with this game. I still like it as it is. But just just remember, play Early Access for what it is. Understand that things are going to keep changing. Just keep track of what versions have the features you like, so you can keep to those old versions until you see what the rest comes out as. Um, beyond that, I mean, of course, there's going to be minor issues here or there. I don't have very many performance issues. Um, I haven't played this version of the game yet. On the version before it, I was having load in, loading time issues. It wasn't crashing. It was just taking a lot of time, of, a lot of time to load. But they say in the devlogs for this version that they fixed a lot of loading time issues. So, we'll see. Hopefully it'll be faster. I'd like that. Um, 
mean, just don't have buyer's remorse. Keep eye, keep an eye on the reviews and keep an eye on the game. I know I'm right about to show you what's in it. So I'll see you in character creation because let's roll on to a completely brand new game. Okay, here we are in character creation. Um, do for you are the six main cultures of the game. I say main, it's pretty much the six cultures in the game. There's a few mercs here or there, but they all share these cultures. Um, each one gets a bonus. Uh, I looked a little bit. It doesn't look like it changed too drastically. The Vlandians still get bonus experience from winning battles. The Sturgeons and the Batanians still get uh, speed penalty bonuses in specific terrain. To me, that's underwhelming because you have to be on that terrain to use it. And it just... Why would I want a bonus that limits where I can go? The Empire, they get construction speed bonuses. Which is awesome. It means that they can fight, that they can uh, take territory and hold it better. Which, I mean, that's why Rome succeeded so well. They had engineering behind them. Uh, the Asurai are good traders. Yep. 30% cheaper caravans, 10% less trade penalty. And the Crusades are horsemen. I mean, they're the Mongols. That, I know that's, it's horsemen. So it's not limiting where you can go. It's just saying you have to have cavalry in your ranks. Which, again, they're the Mongols. They're famous for cavalry. So that's, that's a good bonus for them. Um, trying to think of who I want to be. I was playing as Batanians, and I mean, they're awesome, but so are, I mean, every race is probably awesome if you know how to play them. I like Vlandians and Empire. Uh, Batanian, the way I'd play them is as a kind of samurai. I'd be a noble, I mean, you'll see what their nobles are like, I'm sure, in this campaign. Uh, trying to think. It's kind of a meme by now. If you're not playing as a horse archer, you're not playing Mountain Blade right. And that's like any of these games, not just this one. But that, that's because, you know, in the early game when you're facing unarmored enemies, it's uh, easier just to get yourself a horse and a bow and go solo for a while. Troops are semi, or rather expensive and, you know, they are drained on upkeep if you go with solo. Then you can power level yourself and just build up a warband later. That kind of defeats the spirit of the game. So I think I'm going to go Empire. Uh, let's... I'm going to read you off the lore. Empire. The Calradian Empire is in decline. Even before the murder of the Emperor Eretikos, the once united realm was torn by political rivalries. Today, those factions are in open war. Yet, Calra yet Calradians endure. They are technologically more advanced than their neighbors, and their mastery of engineering is not just evident in their aqueducts, beautiful architecture, and massive city walls. It also makes them experts in siege warfare. Yeah, they're good at taking territory, and, and holding it, as long as they've got the troops for it. Which, that's another weakness in this game sometimes. We'll see if it still holds. Okay, our guy... Um, anybody who remembers my first video in Warband, they're not Warband, <laughs> Bannerlord, will know that I played uh, Imperial back then too. I was female then. I'm going to play, my character was female obviously, as a guy. Let's see. Do I want a mustache? Yeah, that's a little bit. There we go. Let's go for the Gunslinger mustache. Why not? <laughs> This isn't Rome. It doesn't have to stay exactly true to it. True to their styles. Okay, so. What's our family like? Well, depends on what kind of roleplay I'm going for. I like to kind of cut the knot. Go down the center line of the lore. Um, let's see. Urban merchants. Your family were merchants in one of the main cities of the empire. They sometimes organized caravans to nearby towns and discussed issues in the town council. And what that gets me is one focus point to trade. So, and I'll, I'll explain how leveling works in a bit. Um, yeah, 10 skill levels and one focus point to trade and charm. Charm is your ability to 
raise relations with others, uh, trade affects your trade penalties, how much profit you're going to make, uh, one attribute point to social. And the way this works is when you're leveling up, the focus points affect how fast, well, you level up by doing. Every skill has its own experience meter, and those focus points affect how fast your experience goes up in that skill, with more focus leading to more points, at least relative to where you are. I mean, as you level up, it's going to get slower and slower. And there's a limit, there's like only five focus. The attribute points, like social, that adds to it, but it doesn't, it adds to the speed, but it doesn't really do anything for the specific skills. So, now what do I want to be? I could go for the horse archer start. Go with a bow and a horse. And I might I might do that just to be... Because they do have a horse archery in it. So yeah, we'll be foresters. Your family lived in a village, but did not own their own land. Instead, your father supplemented paid jobs with long trips in the woods, hunting and trapping, always keeping a wary eye for the Lord Games Warn Lord's Game Wardens. So yeah, let's go for that. Okay, my early childhood. Uh, let's see. Oh. Used to be that attention to detail. It's, as a child, you were noted for something. It used to be, a, I think, attention to detail might have given you one-handed sword. And now it's giving me cool bow skill. Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, yeah. You were quick on your feet and attentive to what was going on around you. Usually you could run away from trouble, though you could give a good account of yourself in a fight with other children if cornered. Yeah, that sounds about right. This character. Uh, like all village children, you helped out in the fields. You also, well, if I hunted small game, that also maxes out bow. And gives me a little cunning. Uh, the last one gave me bow skill and athletics. The attention to detail. Uh, you accompanied a local hunter as he went into the wilderness helping him set up traps and catch small animals. And yeah, that, that control right there, that's going to help with the bow a lot. Uh, let's see. And, okay, as a youngster growing up in Calradia, war was never too far away. You, okay, training with the cavalry, that's going to be Malay. Yeah, that'll give me a horse point and a point to pole arms, spears, lances, that kind of stuff. Uh, standing guard with the garrisons, that's crossbow and engineering. Link riding with the scouts. Yeah, riding with the scouts. That's where I want to be. Bow and horse. I, I know, it seems to feel cheap that I'm going for horse archer after I already said I wasn't going to. But I'm not going to like use horse archer to be cheap. I'm going to still lead an army, right from the, lead a party right from the start. I'm just not... I'm just going for bow because I like bow. Okay. Yeah. All of Caradia's kingdoms recognize the value of good light cavalry and horse archers and are sure to recruit nomads and borderers with the skill to fulfill those duties. You were a good enough rider that your neighbors pitched in to buy you a small pony and a good bow so that you could fulfill their levy obligations. Yeah, one point to attribute for endurance, which helps with horseman skill, and 10 skill levels to riding and bow. Okay. Before I set out for a life of adventure, biggest achievement was... I think hunting dangerous animal. No, that's crossbow. Okay. Defeated enemy in battle. That's one-handed sword and two-handed. Save my village from a flood. No. Nope. Some tactics and leadership. I'm looking to see if maybe... I know that's going to be trade and smith if I invested some money. Yeah. Hunted. Famous escapade in town. Ha! Huh. Running around. Treated people well. I'm going to go for a little bit of charm and steward. Steward, now that that's an important one too. Really important. Every four points to steward gives you a plus one to your maximum party size. So taking this means I've got an extra two party members I can recruit right away. So I'll take that. You treated people well. Yours wasn't the kind of reputation that local legends are made of, but it was the kind that wins your respect among those around you. You were consistently fair and honest in your business dealings and helpful to those in trouble. In doing so, 
you got a sense of what made people tick. Yeah, a one attribute point show, social, so that helps. Uh, mercy, generosity, and honor. They help with certain skill roles in quests, but other than that, I'm not sure exactly what they do. Plus five renown. We'll get to that when I we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, let's see. And finally, like many families in Kelradia, your life was upended by war. Your home was ravaged by the passage of army after army. Eventually, you sold your property and set off with your father, mother, brother, and your two younger siblings to a new town you'd heard was safer. But you did not make it. Along the way, the inn at which you were staying was attacked by raiders, your parents were slain, and your two youngest siblings seized, but you and your brother survived because... Let's see. No, well, if I want to max out Bo, and drive him off with arrows. Also gives me a point to, uh, cunning. I don't think this does anything to stewardship. No. So... Yeah. Drove them off with arrows. Off with arrows. Uh, you'll see why I'm trying to max that out in a little bit. Okay. You prepare to set off with your brother on a mission of vengeance and rescue? Here's your character. Click finish if you are ready or go back to make changes. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's play with the name. Let's... I use... I tend not to type in the name. I tend to use the dice roll because it takes from a list that's tied to the culture. So all these character names fit in for a roleplay. So Oberon, Sanyon, Losus, Geratops, Joculos, Caster. Sure, I'll go with Caster. That's a good name. So this is our character. He's got maxed out bow, so 50 points in bow skill. And full focus. Uh, he's okay at riding. He's only got like 10 points to riding. Which actually isn't okay, but it's enough for now. Uh, 10 points in athletics. He probably won't build that up very much. You know, 10 points in scouting. That, that affects our uh, movement speed on the campaign map, which you'll see. Uh, 20 points in tactics. Which is going to help if we ever have to auto-resolve battles, but otherwise, I don't think it really does much for you. Though, I don't know. They were talking a lot about perk changes in uh, the devlog. So, I mean, that's why we're doing this as a full series rather than a single review vid. Uh, 10 in charm. That, that's not, it's nothing. It doesn't matter. 10 to stewardship. That'll get us a nice start. Once we start picking up some more carry capacity and food, we can really skyrocket that. Okay, so that's our character. And I will see you in the tutorial. Okay, here we are on the training field with our brother, Nathanos. Brother. It's been three days now we've been tracking these, those bastards. I think we're getting close. We need to think about what happens when we catch them. How are we going to rescue Faisos and Alia and Alea? Are we up for a fight? This looks like an old training field for the legions. Perhaps we can spare some time and brush up on our skills. The practice could come in handy when we catch up with the raiders. Okay. I always do... Well... They call this a tutorial. It's very... Uh, well, right, yeah. It is a tutorial. This is a training ground in a tutorial. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to run the course, but I'm not actually going to, because we're going to see enough combat before this is over anyway. But, okay. You can see a little controls and whatnot on the side. I'm going to leave. I'm going to hold down tab. There we go. Leaving. Yeah, I'll leave this in. I'll leave this little bit of loading in. I've been skipping the load time, the regular loading screens, because I just... Didn't want to bog down the video with them. I didn't really notice that much of a better load time yet. But my computer's been on for about 24 hours. Okay. You're at a training field. You can learn the basics of combat here. Well, I already know the basics. So let's go to actual fights. Okay. 
Brother, before we do anything else, we're low on food. There's a village north of here where we can buy provisions and find some help. You're a better rider than I am, so I'll let you lead the way. Yeah, let's go to Tavea. Which, all of this will be familiar... Well, this will mostly be familiar to those who uh, watched my first, my last vid on this game. Which was the last vid I did, actually. All the way back in April. Uh, but I'm going to replay it for those who haven't seen that. Okay, your party is starving. You lose five morale while we're at it. Let me show you the levels real quick. The character screen. Hey, skills. You start off with one level already. So you can put it wherever you want. I'm going to put it to steward because that is a really important skill. And bow. Every 25 skill points you get unlocks a perk choice. Uh, and it's not always a choice. Like you can see right there, there's only one perk there. But some perks last I saw weren't working. And I haven't really kept track of how well they're working. If there are any that aren't that don't work, they aren't marked as such, which I kind of don't like, but it is what it is. Okay, bow control. If I'm gonna be moving while I shoot, then I'm gonna want that. Otherwise, yeah, bow control. Reduce accuracy penalty by moving by 30%. Any bow equipped troops in your formation gain plus 5% damage with bows. Uh, dead aim. Increase your headshot damage bonus by 30% with bows. Bow equipped troops in your formation gain plus 20 archery skill. I'm gonna take dead aim. Cause I'm not. I'm not actually gonna be a horse archer. I'm gonna be what I call a mounted bowman. Which anybody who knows military history, think of it as the difference between cavalry and mounted infantry. I'm gonna ride from point to point and then dismount to actually shoot. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. So I will end up building up some athletic skill. Athletics skill. Mm, sorry about my voice. Uh, sometimes I get a lisp. Okay. Bodkin. I'm going to take Bodkin. Because uh, your attacks with bows ignore 10% of enemies' armor. And anybody in your... Any bow-equipped troops in your formation also ignore 5% of enemy armor. Um, yeah, because otherwise it's a reload movement penalty. Which again, I'm not going to be moving while I shoot. So, yeah. Let's just ignore armor. Okay. So that's for character for character building. Let's get on with the actual tutorial. It's like, come on game. I want to show you in a good light. Load in right. Okay. Take a walk around. I'm like, I always, or almost always, do the tutorial. There's no consequences to it. Like... Even if you lose battles, you just get back up to full health. And, like, when the whole thing's done, you get back up to full health. And you get back all the money that you spent on it. So. But, you get to keep whatever experience and levels you've gained. So, it's just, it's basically just free experience. And it lets you get into the middle of the fighting. Hey, Nathan is... We're here, I guess, so we need food, and after that, maybe some men to come with us. Uh, the headman here can probably help us. Let's try to find him. Okay. Yeah. You might be thinking, is that him? No, that's a peasant. How am I going to find him? If you hold down the... Okay. By default, it's the alt button. I changed it to the control button in my computer. If you hold down uh, the correct button... You can see exactly where the notable people are. And you can just ride to them. Which, if I hadn't disabled the tutorial, the, the little side tutorial on the screen, then you would have seen that. I would have told you. Let's see. Notary, you don't need. Here's the headman. Headman Eucasios. I'm Eucasios, headman of this village. What brings you here? We need help. Some raiders have taken our younger brother and sister captive. We think they may have passed this way. They got your people too? Sorry to hear that. Those bastards have done a bit of killing and looting in these parts as well. We think they've gone north. I reckon there are a few folk around here who will join you in going after them if you'll pay for their gear. Once you've made your preparations, come and talk to me again. I may have a task for you if you're going after the raiders. Yep. So you gotta leave... 
the main village, and then you get... You leave the 3D screen, you get back to the menu, then you can buy your stuff, including recruiting soldiers. Yeah. Load times are still a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> you know, recruit them. And buy food. Hmm. You may have seen that I got a huge load of, uh, points to leadership from that. There we go. Okay, brother. We finished our preparations. Let's talk to the headman again. He said, he had said he may have a task for us. We could use, uh, this friendship. Yeah, use this friendship. Okay. First, I'm going to check out just how many points of leadership I gained. Yeah, four points right there. <laughs> and that one recruitment. Early game. Gotta love how much it gives you uh, experience. Alright. Now that we already... Yeah, visit. Now we've already done the whole, Hey, this is how you find people part of the tutorial. It's okay with us just jumping straight to him. It wouldn't have let me if I'd tried originally. Still won't let me talk to him straight up. Quick talk to him. Oh, game. There we go. I don't think the loading times were such were quite so bad before. I mean, like a long time ago when I did the first vid. Oh, hey, there's there's that grin. Ew. It's like, close your mouth, man. <laughs> Headman Yukasios, glad to see you found what you needed. Now, about that matter I mentioned earlier. There's this wandering doctor who comes through here from time to time. Name of Takteos. Treats people for free. <laughs> We're fond of him. Well, we last saw him a few days ago. He was carrying some sort of chest, which, was, which he was very mysterious about. He was on some sort of quest, he said, that wouldn't tell us more. He set off on the road just a few hours before the raiders came through here. Well, he's not really a worldly type, just the kind of fellow who'd stumble into a trap and let himself be captured. We're worried about him. If you can keep an eye out for him, this Tacteos, we'd be very grateful. Maybe, if he's alive and well, he'll tell you a little more about his quest. Okay, let's go. Seriously. <laughs> and I'm not editing those out. I'm not editing these load times out. I'm trying to show the game as it is. Okay. So, the next stage of the tutorial. I'm waiting for that to load in. Nah. Okay, next stage of the tutorial is... you got to beat these three armies. Or, armies. Parties, really. So... Let's go do that. Go first. I'll show you the party screen. Yep. There's our brother. There's our six... Yeah, our six troops. I think I'm gonna hit that. It, this is a feature I really love in this series. It started with Warband. It allows you to custom organize your troops so you can choose which units go and which group go together. So it's really nice for creating your own custom formations. Okay. There's, there's three battles here. We're going to fight all three of them. I'm going to try and get through this uh, tutorial before the end of this video. Okay. Now, if I use that button, yeah. I can see exactly where the enemies are coming from. This only works on notable characters and enemy formations. Once you've broken a formation and your enemies are routing, you don't, you can't use that to keep track of them anymore. Curl them yeah. all! Yo, charge! I'm just gonna go annoy them. I, I think I will be a horse archer. And just stay on horse. If I were a Batanian, I would be doing this on foot. 
didn't need that one quite enough. Okay, never mind. I'm just gonna let my guys do it then. Oh, nope. There we go. Oh, I killed one. It's like, guys, get out of my way. Oh, I hit him in the arm. Yep. Yep, he's running. Let's get some sword experience in. And he's still running. Come on. Yeah, there, there's no friendly fire on the swords, but the bows, yeah, you gotta be careful with. <laughs> I can whack a friendly horse all day long, it won't kill them. But, uh, shoot! Yeah, if you shoot them with a bow, they will get hurt. You, you saw that little bit of friendly fire earlier. Hey. Let's see, we killed five of them, took one captive. Uh, that's just wounded. Uh, let's see what kind of skills I gained. And five points to uh, one-handed, one point to bow, and two points to horse. So yeah, see, I mean, that was like seven, eight, yeah, eight skill points right there in that one battle. Early game is just ridiculous for power leveling. And it seems to be ridiculous for load times. <laughs> but, they, but it is loading. There, There's no crashing going on here. It is loading. Yeah, I'm going to take one of these. It's not going to matter because as soon as the tutorial's over, everything is going to uh, reload. Yeah, everything's going to go back to default. But, just for now, give me a little bit of extra armor. Tattered Eastern Wrapped Arm Guards. Yep. Okay. On to the next fight. You has been saved. Yay! Okay. Attack! Of course, now I'm kicking myself for not using the uh, movement penalty reduction perk. <laughs> I'm gonna try doing this from foot, on foot. Nah. So that one very obviously is routing. I'll double back and see what the others are doing as soon as I take care of this guy. Oh, there's only one enemy who isn't routing. Hey. Yep. Got him in the leg. Got him in the back. There we go. It's me. Of course, I can see my guys, but I can't see the enemy because... He's not in a formation anymore. Now that's how the AI in this game works. It ties formations together. There we go. And you can see in that top right corner how where all the kills go. A white skull means that they're just wounded. A red skull meant that they were killed. But yeah, the AI ties formations together. And you break formation by hitting the chart by calling a charge. And charge really messes with things as far as the AI is concerned. Even your own men. Which, I mean, it doesn't wreck it. It just uh, takes away the intelligent aspect of it. Everybody starts fighting for themselves. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you gotta keep an eye on it. I use formations to keep my guys together until the very last second and then when things start looking like my flanks are gonna fall apart that's when I say okay break formation just gut them all now I gotta hunt down these guys yeah single click you get normal speed 
double click, you go fast. Like, I'm trying to find where that other party went. Yep, they're there. Which they might have just spawned in. Everybody go. Which you you'll see formation fighting. Just not in these current battles because of the nature of them. Yeah, I charged that guy mostly just to annoy him. Yay. Cool, it looks like somebody got in a little hit on him before I did. Only did 33 damage and I still took him out. The neck. Yeah. Headshots aren't difficult in this, you just got to focus. There we go. Chest shot. Oh, I think neck shots used to do a lot more for me than headshots. I sliced through a neck and wound up doing over 100 damage, but a headshot might only get 70 or 80. Yay. That was a total kill. No captives that time. <laughs> hmm. I usually have more gold than this in the uh, tutorial. Not sure if that was an adjustment they made or what, but... Okay. Notification. You rescue several prisoners that the raiders had been dragging along. They look parched and exhausted. You give them a bit of water and bread, and after a short while, one staggers to his feet and comes over to you. Okay. Let me guess. It's gonna be... Yep, Tacteos. I don't know who you are, but I'm in your debt. These brigands would have marched us to our deaths. My name's Tacteos. I'm a doctor by trade. I was on, well, a bit of a quest, but now I'm thinking I'm not really made for this kind of thing. I was with a caravan, and I just came out of the brush. We were surrounded and outnumbered, so we gave up. I figured they'd keep us alive if just for the ransom, but then they started flogging us along at top speed, without any water, and I was just about ready to drop. I could feel the signs of heat stroke creeping up, and I told them, but they just flogged me more. If your group hadn't come along, maybe I have a way to thank you properly. We're looking for two children captured by the raiders. Can you tell us anything? I'm afraid I haven't seen any children. But after our caravan was attacked, the chief of the raiders, raiders <laughs> the one they call Radagos, took and rode off with our more valuable belongings, including the chests that I had. He seemed to be controlling more than one band raiding around this area. If this lot has your kin, I think he'd be the one to know. And since I have nothing of value left to repay your help, I'll tell you this. If you do catch up with and defeat that ruffian, you may be able to recover my chest. It contains a valuable ornament, which I was told could be of great value, if you knew where to sell it. I was trying to find out more about it, but, as I say, I've had all my urge for traveling flogged out of me. Right now, I don't think I'd venture more than 20 paces from a well as long as I live. We'll keep that in mind. It doesn't look like much, and I suspect this lot would give it away for a few coins but I got it from a mercenary whom I treated once, and swore it was related to Neretes' folly. I don't know what that means, except that Neretes was, of course, the emperor who died in battle some years back. Maybe you can find out its true value. Thanks for saving me again. I hope our paths will cross again. And now, the next quest. Find Radagus' hideout, and battle him. Uh, let's see. First, I'm gonna... I am going to recruit one of my prisoners. There we go. Get a little bit of extra fighting power going on there. Caster gained a level. It's not telling me why. I'm guessing that's from uh, Roguery. I don't know why I just hit the party button again. I'm going to check this because levels are... 
character screen. Yep, yeah, got one level. Uh, I don't see any more roguery points, but a little bit of experience there. So, more to steward. I want that as high as I can get it. As you can see in the party screen, up in the top right, how big my party could get. Could get up to 22. By default, it maxes out at 20 at the beginning. Okay. Radagos' hideout. Let's go ahead and attack. I'm going to be doing a lot of bow work here. Yeah, I'll do. I'll finish this tutorial in the in the first episode, and then talk a little bit about future episodes. And then I think we'll call it an episode. <laughs> we'll call it a part today. Okay. So everybody's following me. You can see that. Okay. I'm gonna tell them shield wall. Oh shoot. There we go. That's teamwork. 40 damage to the chest, and then my guys finished them off. But yeah. And you can see they're holding up their shields and walking in a line. Except for that raider who doesn't have a shield. And that's because I put them in a shield wall. By default, that's F2, F2. Shift is the zoom, which I'm doing right now. No, I'm just going to run ahead of my guys. They'll keep... I mean... Okay, it's going to take them a little bit to keep up. I don't want to run too far ahead of them. I'll stop here at the stream for a bit. Yeah, you're going to recognize this from that last video. Oh, well, let's see. Maybe I can... Annoy him. Hey, I actually managed him. And... Okay, took him out. And hurt him. See, I am actually good with the bow as long as I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> that was two headshots. Did 111 pierce damage. That is why I took that perk for headshots. <laughs> Come on, guys. Hurry up already. And the top bar. That is our relative strength. The orange is us, because it defaults to that in the very beginning of the game. The gray is the enemy. And you can see I've already taken out maybe... Uh, good 40% of them. There was three of them, so... Let's see if I can... Nah, arrow went behind him. And he went to investigate it. They both did. Boom. There we go. Now I hit something. And hit him again. Die, you bastards! And I'll let my guys take care of it. Come on. There we go. Yeah, they're being smart. They're using their shields first. Hey, I nailed them in the arm. Good. And we keep going. I think this one battle is um, kind of redeeming me for all the failures in the last three. <laughs> Let's see. There's one more in the distance that I can see. And probably one more over... Yeah, I think... I, yeah, I see one more all the way over there. That got him to stop patrolling. And that put some damage on him. And here he comes. And another 37. And another 32. And there we go. Shoulder shot. And you might be able to see... Yeah, right over there. That, I think, is the last one. Well, I say last one. 
that's the last one before the reinforcement wave arrives. But I don't know how big that's going to be. Last few times I played this, there wound up being like three guys. Yeah, he's going to get annoyed. And I'm going to hit him. See, even, even misses can still help. I'm just doing what I can to preserve my guys because I'm not going to do the duel. Let's call it up now. There we go. Yeah, it's only three guys. <laughs> Come on, Radagos. Okay. One moment. Hey, little girl. Get down. My cat is currently in the way of my screen. There we go. <laughs> Radagos. So, who's this that comes through my place of business killing my employees? Where did you took our little brother and sister? Where are they? Good, Evan. I'll need a better description than that. My men have harvested dozens of little brats in this region. Quite good hunting grounds. Already sent most of them south through a slave market I know, though. Since your hunt for your kin is fruitless, how about you clear off and save your own lives? Either that or I force you to lick up all the blood you've spilled here with your tongues. Or you and I could settle this one-on-one. -on -one. Eh, fat chance. I don't duel slavers. Men, attack. Yeah! And like that. <laughs> His own raider kill uh, raider took him out. Well, nice. <laughs> Yay. And that's the end of that fight. 1.6 morale gained. Yay. Uh, how many points did I gain? Four more athletics points and five more, six more bow points. And they didn't do anything to us. That is why I wanted to nurse my guys all the way to the very end. Okay. And we're waiting. <laughs> there you go. Radigos. Well, I recognize defeat when I see it. If I'm going to be your captive, let me introduce myself. I'm Radagos. You haven't cut my throat yet, which was a wise move. I'm sure I can find a way to be worth more to you alive than dead. You'd better help us get our brother and sister back, or you'll swing from a tree. Oh, you'll need my help, alright. If you want to get them back alive, that is. See, my boys have some pretty specific instructions about what to do if there's a rescue attempt. Shall we get on the road? You remember... If I drop dead of exhaustion or drown in some river, that's it for your little dears. I don't expect a cozy palanquin now, but you'd best not make it too hard a trip for me. Yeah, yeah. It's only a flesh wound. <laughs> Here we go. Another prisoner. Mountain bandit boss. They're only doing this for form's sake. I know it's coming. There we go. You come across a chest with an old piece of bronze in it. It's so battered and corroded that it could have been anything from a cup to a crown. This must be the chest Tecteos mentioned to you. It had something to do with Nereti's folly. Nithinos. I was hoping to find more treasure here, but I think business wasn't going too well for Radagos and his gang. I found a strange looking metal piece though. Doesn't look too valuable, but it could be the artifact Teos was talking about. Maybe we can sell it to one of the noble clans for a hefty price. Alright then, let's get on the road. I have a better idea. We would have a better chance if we split up now. I'll take Radagos and go find the slaver market and look for a way to free the children. However, we must be careful not to endanger their lives, and it could be better to just buy them. We need to have our purses full for that, though. I'll need to take these men with us. Radagos is a slippery one. I don't want him getting away. So you want me to raise the money to ransom the little ones? Indeed. You'll have to find a way to do that. Maybe this bronze thing can help. Tecteo said it could be worth a fortune to the right person if you manage not to get killed. 
If he's telling the truth, you must be careful. Never reveal that you have it, but try to understand its value and how it can be sold. One more thing. When you are talking to nobles and other people of importance, make sure you present yourself as someone from a distant but distinguished family. You can use our family name if you like, or make up a new one. You will have a better chance of obtaining an audience with nobles, and it will be easier for me to find you by asking around. So, now you get to name your clan. Uh, well, if we're going Imperial, a lot of their clans have, uh, end in, like, OS or ES or something like that. Um, so, at Aurelius, what's to do with gold, um, in Latin, Aurum, AU, that's why AU is the, uh, symbol for gold on the periodic charts. Periodic table. So Aurelius. Okay. So I'm Castor Aurelius. And then you get to choose your banner. Now obviously, I'm gonna go on brand. My channel colors are green and black. And my steam name is Micro Viper. Wee! Just kidding. That. Mm. A little bit smaller. There we go. Now that is looking pretty good. Okay. So. Now that's designed. Yeah, yeah. Look at me, you smug prick. <laughs> And now, tutorial is over. You can see... Okay, so, what's the plan? It's been a while since I've actually done the main story quest, so... I'm going to do it so we can see firsthand what it's like. But that is for another time. Have a wonderful day, night, week, whatever it is for you. I will see you next time. Wonderful time. Bye.